Hello, my name is Brian Emerson, and welcome to Rendering Shiny Things. And uh, this is going to be a Maya tutorial, but the properties that I'm going to be talking about are pretty universal and exhibited in the real world, and it's something that a lot of people I've noticed don't pay too much attention to, so I wanted to uh, shed some light on it, so to speak. So we're going to talk about something called Fresnel reflection here. And Fresnel reflection is a property of a lot of shiny and reflective materials where as the surface approaches glancing angle, it becomes increasingly more reflective. And you can see that here in these little balls. These are supposed to be like a black shiny ball. It kind of looks chrome, but ignore that. So uh, you see this gradient? This is a uh, kind of a dome light source in the sky. And uh, this surface down here is facing the camera, and it's almost black. And this surface over here is pointing a lot more away from the camera, and it's almost white. So that's the effect we're going to try to get. We're going to build. I'm going to show you how to build that into a Fong shader. There are some shaders in Maya that let you do that right out of the box, but those are generally mental ray shaders, and I kind of want to show you how it all works. So uh, let's look at a picture here. This is uh, me driving a Porsche, which isn't why I'm showing you this picture. Uh, if you zoom in over here on the car, you can see this in action. You see how this uh, surface kind of rolls away from the camera and how it's almost black down here and as you roll up in a way it's reflecting the sky and generally the the values we're talking about here are at, when a surface is facing the camera it's about 10 percent reflective or 0.1 and when it's facing exactly glancing angle of the camera or perpendicular to the camera it's going to be almost 100 percent reflective so uh here's another little demonstration that I want to show you. I downloaded this model from the internet and just uh, did some shader work on it. And so this is how it looks with the Fresnel reflection. Now uh, I also did a render where I unplugged the Fresnel reflection and just made it a uniform 50% reflective. And you can see the difference here. So I think this looks a hell of a lot more realistic than this. So that's basically what I want to show you here. And I want to show you how to do it. I also did this with the little title card. And you can see this is without the Fresnel reflection. This looks really CG to me. And I, I see this kind of stuff a lot. So especially like if you look at the, the front faces, the little letters, since they're facing directly to the camera in real life, they wouldn't have much reflection on them. And in the CG version, they have a lot of reflection. And that just doesn't read well to me. So I also, as you're walking around in the real world, I want you to try to pay attention to uh, glass windows and storefronts. Just as you're walking past it, you know, go over and look at it at a glancing angle and check out how reflective it is. And then when you walk and you're facing towards it, see how much you can see through it. That's glass is something, plastic. Cars, I, I said before that cars exhibit this too. Cars are metal, but they're covered in... A coat of paint and then a lot of times they're covered in a clear coat on top of that and that's where the Fresnel reflection is coming from. Again metal generally tends to be pretty uniformly reflective if you think about you know if you, if you look down at like the, the wheels here or if you look at a chrome ball like that's going to be reflective the same all the way around. If we look at the front of this car check out how much this hood is kicking. So uh, without further ado let's switch over to Maya and take a look at some stuff. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a NURB sphere and first, we're just going to apply to it, apply it to a NURB sphere, and see how that goes. So let's open up our hypershade. Now, uh, the first thing we want to do is create a Fong material in our uh, Create Maya nodes and assign that Fong material. I'm assuming you guys know how to assign materials and stuff like that. Um, we're going to open up our Fong material here, and uh, where we want to be working is in our reflectivity node. But uh, before I do that, let's talk a little bit about what all this stuff means. So. Um, the attributes we really want to pay attention to right now are our color attribute, uh, our diffuse attribute, and then if we go down here, we've got our specular color and our reflectivity. And these two and these two are pretty uh, connected to each other. The color and the diffuse are basically subtracted from each other to get your final value. The color can be an image. The diffuse is really just, or can, can be a grayscale, but yeah, it's really just a... Uh, you're getting your color information from the color and then the, the brightness information from the diffuse channel. But you could also just you know set this to one and use whatever is in your color. And I'm sure you guys have all done this before. The same thing uh, is the case for the specular color and reflectivity. They have the same relationship. And also, these are connected to each other in another way in that you never want a val any single value to add up to more than one because 
in a lot of ways, and I, I want to talk about this in a different tutorial, but color and diffuse and specular and reflectivity are really all the same thing. It just diff it, it just refers to how bumpy the surface is. If the surface is really bumpy, then it's totally diffuse. If it's a little bumpy, then it's somewhere in between, which is impossible to get out of the shader in a lot of ways. And then if it's a perfect mirror finish, then it's just coming from here. And a metal, a metal material would have zero diffuse because there's no diffuse reflection in, in metal. So uh, let's move on. Now, what we want to do is we're going to be working with our reflectivity node. So we're going to create a uh, map here. And what we want to do is create a ramp. Make sure your uh, 2D texture is make sure it's set to normal instead of projection. And uh, we're going to create a ramp here. And we want to set this to black and white. So a little trick I usually do is I just select it and drag that to black. And then if you select this, you can drag it to black and drag it back up. And now it's white. It loses that color information. OK, so now we've got that. The next thing we want to do is create a fancy little node here that we call, um, it's, it's got a facing ratio in it, but the name of the node is actually going to be sampler info. So I'm going to create my sampler info node. And I don't know if you're familiar with the connection editor, but it's pretty great. So what we want to do is I'm going to middle mouse button drag from sampler info onto my ramp, and I get this little pop-up box, and I'm going to go to other, and it's going to pull up my connection editor. And the connection editor allows you to connect any attribute from from one to another. So you can go from, you know, you can connect attributes within the same object. You can connect attributes from one object to another. It's it's that whole node-based thing that you always hear people talking about, and it's pretty great. So I'm going to click on my facing ratio, which is the last attribute of my sampler info node. And then I'm going to go up and uh, on my input, this is where the ramp is. This is sampler info on the left, the ramp is on the right. I'm going to open up my UV cord. And the UV cord refers to how the ramp gets ramped onto something. So uh, I always forget which one to connect it to. So I'm going to start with the U cord and just see what happens. And you don't really see anything happen here when you do it because it, this little preview render it does doesn't do anything fancy. So some, uh, something I like to do is if I just right mouse button, drag on, drag from the ramp to the fong, and just apply it to color then you get to actually see what it's doing. And I do that for a lot of things. Whenever I'm creating a shader, I'll kind of preview it in the color channel. And then when I, when I know I've gotten it right, then I'll plug it in and disconnect it from the color channel. And in this case, I've gotten it wrong because it looks like just a regular ramp. So what that means is we plugged it into the wrong chord. So I'm going to disconnect it from the U chord, and I'm going to connect it to the V chord. And there we go. That's doing something interesting, where you see as, it, as we get to the silhouette, it's turning black which isn't exactly what we want, but it's kind of doing the right thing. And this is, you've seen this kind of shader a lot. A lot of times, like the high-end 3D, you know, everybody downloads the X-ray shader. That's pretty much what it's doing here. They're also probably plugging it into the transparency node. Uh, what else? Cartoon shaders, you could, a lot of times with your ramp, you can just set it to uh, none instead of linear, and it'll just give you like a solid transition from one to the other. And so this is just, doing this will just give you a black silhouette. Another thing I like to do is if you want to get like a cloth or like a like a wool kind of look or like a really cartoony look I'll, in my color channel, I'll just throw throw that in there and have it be really close to the same color. Like you know, turtle skin could be like a light green, and then the outside could be slightly lighter or something, and it gives it it just gives it a nice little look. It's kind of a, a little bit extra, a little icing on the cake. So let's move on. So another thing we're doing wrong here is our ramp is the wrong way around. We really want white to be on the bottom and black to be on the top. So now it's black in the middle and white on the outside. And this is how we want our reflectivity to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this connection on the color channel. So I'm just going to right click on color and say break connection. And we really want to set our color to black because we're going to render kind of a black plastic sphere here. And we've already got this plugged into reflectivity when we want to set our specular color to one. So, and these really refer to real world values. You just make sure that, you know, if it's white, then that's reflecting 100% of the light, and then that's going to get subtracted from whatever's in here. So, you just uh, you can change these to percentage. Just try to think about them as real world values. Oh, yeah, that's another thing I want to talk about is how much light things reflect. Like, uh, Printer paper, which is pretty much the brightest thing around that you come in contact with, is probably about 90% reflective. So you got to you know, look at printer paper next to what you're trying to model and try to decide how much less reflective it is than the printer paper. 